In this video, we're going to talk about the end of section 2.2, where we assess normality of a distribution. We do this doing two different methods. First, we calculate the empirical rule to see if the data fits the model of 68, 99, or 95, 99.7% of the data between uh, one, two, and three standard deviations. And the second way is we create a normal probability plot and seek to see if it's linear or not. Uh, so first, how can we tell if a normal distribution for, is appropriate for a given variable? One thing you cannot do is assume that it's normal based on the shape of the histogram or box plot. It may look normal, but you can only really can tell by doing one of these two methods. Some examples of normal distributions, we can talk about uh, standardized test scores like the SAT. Those are normally distributed on purpose. Uh, IQ tests as well also normally distributed. Uh, when factories produce things, uh, like for example, if Lay's potato chips, you know, we have a nine ounce bag, that would be the mean. The uh, amount of error in that nine ounces would be normally distributed. You would have that normal distribution curve for that. Examples of non-normal distributions, things that are skewed, personal income. Because it's got a lower bound of zero and it seems that people that have lots of money, it seems that they can get more rich as the day goes on or as the years go on um, up into the billion. So it kind of it definitely skews the data. There's no normal curve there. Um, survival time of cancer patients. If you were to look at the data, you'll, you'll see that the uh, survival time of cancer patients, it, there are some people that live way past their uh, doctor's estimation, you know, months or years, uh, but there's plenty of people that unfortunately pass before those estimations and therefore they skew the data in that direction. So normal probability plots are like scatter plots. So you'll see a bunch of data scattered, and they're going to have data values on the x-axis, the raw scores, and then the corresponding z-scores will be on the y-axis. So you'll see something like this, z-score of 0, the positive z-scores up here, the negative z-scores on the y-axis, and then your x-data, whatever it is, um, across the x-axis. If a distribution of a variable is approximately normal, the plot will look approximately linear. Why? The reason is because if you have a curve in your normal probability plot, that means you either have a lot of data bunched up around the z-scores or you have very little data across z-scores. So either way, it's going to be a skewed um, distribution and you don't want that in terms of uh, if you're trying to assess for normality. So first, we're going to do the two different methods. First, we're going to calculate 68%, 95%, and 99.7% to see what percent the data actually falls in there in those uh, windows of one, two, and three standard deviations. And the second thing we're gonna do is do the probability plot on the TI-84 um, using the L1 stat tools. So first, uh, let's look at the data here. We have speed data, and we wanted to see if the uh, data is close to a normal distribution or not. So the first method, we're gonna type all this data into L1. So you press your stat button, type everything into L1, should look like that. This should be 23 data points. Go to stat, calc, the one variable stats. That's the first option. All right, I got a mean of 31.48, standard deviation of 3.64. So the rule for normal distributions is that within one standard deviation, there's 68% of the data. Two standard deviations, there's 95% of the data. And then three standard deviations, there's 99.7% of the data. We're going to figure out the windows for one, two, and three standard deviations. And we're going to see how close our percentages fall to 68, 95, and 99.7%. So within one standard deviation of our data set, we're going to do 31.48 plus or minus 3.64. So we're going to add one standard deviation and subtract one standard deviation. You get 27.84 to 35.12. That's within one standard deviation. If you go through and count how many data points are actually in that window 
up here, for example, 29 would, would count, 34 would count, 34 would count, 28 would count, 30, 29, you go through the entire list. Out of the 23 data points, 16 of them actually fall in that window. If you calculate the percentage of 16 over 23, that percentage is actually 69.6%. In terms of being close to 68%, that's pretty close. It's only a percent and a half off. So we're still gonna be okay with it being approximately normal so far. Let's do two and three standard deviations. So now we're gonna do 31.48 plus or minus two times the standard deviation of 3.64. That window is gonna be 24.2 to 38.76. So 31.48 plus two times 3.64 and then minus two times 3.64 will give you this window. The number of data values that fall between these two numbers is 22 out of the 23 data points. There's only one that doesn't. That's a percentage of 95.7%. If you look at your data or your percentages, 95 to 95.7%. Still, it's even closer than the first percentage. Let's do one more. It's gonna be 31.48 plus or minus three times the standard deviation, 3.64. That window is 20.56 and 42.4. And all 23 data values fall in that window, which is 100%. Now, if you compare these three percentage, percentages with the empirical rule, They're very, very close. So you can say this data set is approximately normal based on the percentages. All three have to match up pretty well. In this case, all three do. So we're gonna move on to the second way you check it, the probability plot. So we're still gonna use the data that's already in L1. So you keep it there. And now we're gonna do a stat plot. So clear all this out. If you press the second Y equals button, stat plot, we wanna make sure it's turned on, press enter. Turn it on. The last selection in graphs, it looks kind of like a scatter plot, but it's more of a linear scatter plot for sure. This is called the normal probability plot. You highlight that, your data list, make sure it's the data list you typed into. The data axis is gonna be the X. So the uh, speed units are gonna be uh, strewn across the X axis instead of the Y. The mark, it doesn't really matter. We choose usually the squares, um, the empty squares. So you press enter, graph. I've already zoomed nine to this, but let's say it doesn't show up. You press the zoom button and nine is the zoom stat option. And this is uh, what your calculator makes your life a lot easier. Um, it just zooms in, it knows where to go for the, the actual data. It just zooms in and makes a perfect window for you. You press enter and this is your normal probability plot. And as you can see, it's pretty linear, except for maybe this area right here, a couple of spots where they're um, stacked here, but overall it's pretty linear. You could say this one is easily approximately normal because of the linear um, plot. So if I asked you to sketch it, you know, this is your zero z-score. Just try your best to sketch what it looks like, even the points that are pretty much stacked. and do your best to make it look like how it appears on your calculator. And you could say it's approximately normal, so there, because it is linear, um, and therefore, you know that it's